Hi guys, it's Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and we are drawing this today. It's a 10 minute challenge and it's also an Instagram challenge. Draw Matt and Doug's Boats 11, links in the description below. I'm using my um, fountain pen, couple of brushes, loose colours and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments on this sketch. Very loose. Do you like that? Is there things that you would do differently? And if I went longer, you know, what would you like to see me have, have spent more time on? Anyway, let's get going. So I'm going to start off with a little frame because Instagram photos are square and it's useful to just frame what we're doing and some of the colours can come outside that, that's fine, but we've got a lovely little frame to play with now and then we can just get sketching and this is such a fascinating boat isn't it? All these people, lots of little bits of rust, lots of little shapes. So I'm going to start, we're just loosely grabbing that sort of compelling outline and we've got so much depth of reflection in front of the boat we can just immediately get that and if we sort of dance around the page we've got this continuous line drawing feel which will link it all up and then we can just come and add these areas which are a little bit darker and start capturing the rest of the boat now so if we loop around and we can get the top here. We can turn that top just into one big sort of oval and then get all these fun little bits and bobs which are on top. And then these windows as well. Just about grabbing the little bits of interesting detail as and when we find them. We've got all these people as well. Remember people just simple shapes so let's just get them in. We're not going to have to put all the people in, we don't have to make them perfect people either. We can just get some ideas of people sort of flowing around the page. And then here we've got a load of sort of equipment. So we go back to more rigid lines that just suggest a lot of fuss going on there. Then we've got a little handrail which I want to get in. And we've got the back edge of the boat as well. So we can even block that in in places with a bit of sort of loose hatching almost. And let's just work on a few details in the front of our boat, including things like this uh, number, E43, our number and letter designation. Oh, there's one here as well, E43. And what else we got? These little funny patches of rust. And then we can kind of just start linking that to the sea a little more. Do you see how it's sort of separated? Because there's the, the boat and then no tone below it. Add a little bit of tone and we'll link that all up again. And then let's work on the back a little bit. So we've got this sort of fascinating coastline. A bit of a cliff with some golden colours just below it. A few little birds that we can even suggest, just with little circles will be plenty for this sketch. And then in the background we've also got loads of shapes and textures of this cliff face. And some greenery here, and we can get some greenery in with little circles. And how are we doing? So we're sort of building up nicely aren't we? So one thing we could do is come and we could just hatch down and get that tone building up in the background. And we could even apply a little bit of this hatching on some of these shadowy areas while we're doing that, just little loose bits. And I'm going to say actually that's the, that's the sketch done in around four minutes, so a nice quick sketch today. So next we're going to go for some really loose colours and let's play with these sort of warm tones in the background. So a little bit of quinacridone sienna, going into a bit of quinacridone gold as well. And just splash that on 
And why not pop some of these green tones in as well? And then as we get down, we want a really deep bit of contrast here to get the edge of this cliff. And we can have that seeping upwards if we just keep it nice and loose. We can also have that just coming in from the side of our frame and there as well. And the sea is pretty light, it's pretty much the lightest thing in the image, so we can almost leave that. But if we just get this golden reflection in and link it in a couple of places, just refresh a bit of that golden reflection, just using the same colours as we used up here. And then we can just really loosely, if we skim across, and then we clean our brush, dry it a little bit, we can just soften in there. And we're kind of trying to negatively paint and loosen those colours all around the boat. There's dots of blue in there, so if we just tap in a little bit of cobalt here and there, and then we get to the front of the boat, and that's where we really start to see some colour, some blues coming through. Not many blues, so a lot of a lot of white still, but this time with a lot of deep colours. And the blue really, that's just the reflection, I think, of the boat. And the deep colours is the shadows coming from the boat. And then there's also some sort of warm colours, some rusty colours. Again, probably all just coming from the boat. So there we go. So that's kind of captured all of that, hopefully, really quickly. And now we can spend a little bit of time thinking about how we do this boat. So we want to make the boat stand out a little bit, I think, but also keep it nice and loose. So I'm going to go for a, a fallow blue and cobalt blue mix and just drag that all along. And that's a nice colour, so we can start incorporating that a little bit more in a few places. And then we can brush up. And I've changed brush here just to a, a smaller size uh, 2, as it happens, size 2 round brush, just to have a little more control. And I want to get... Um, some rusty feelings in. So I've got some myquinactone, I've got a little bit of alizarin as well. I'm just getting these sort of red interesting tones in. We can bring that all along the top as well. And then as well as the red tones, we've got dark tones, haven't we? So that's going to overlay the top, overlay the bottom. And although we're painting to some extent, we're painting neat here, aren't we? To some extent, he says, looking at this page. Um, but to another extent, we're actually painting really loose because we've got the um, the water naturally melding things as we go. And that's that gives you that lovely effect of a sort of rusty boat, sort of slightly dilapidated, but also, you know, cared for, looked after. So next, get some of this sort of shadow in on the main part of the boat and this is where we can get a little bit more bold with our red we can just pick a nice red again and use that instead of the orange we'll just use a nice bold red to separate it from the background and then coming up we've got our wires and we can actually leave them mostly as ink but perhaps just a couple of bits of, of dark and that's with some indigo and mixed with a bit of our quinacridone Kind of get some tone into these windows as well. Then we've got a choice of what we do with our people. And actually, I think, to be honest, they're quite effective as negative space. Just they're also surrounded by negative space of sea. And I quite like the look that, that that's giving. So I think we can just spend a little bit longer thinking about other parts. Where else can we just add a little bit of interest of je ne sais quoi as they say so let's get a little bit more green perhaps going in here on this this greenery things are still nice and wet so we can make these sort of vivid strokes and they'll just gradually soften we could also take a bit more of our quinacridone either the quinacridone sienna or quinacridone gold and we can just create some of these other shapes which we've got going on and perhaps another thing we can do, just intensify this transition and bring some of that into the reflection in the sea. And then we can start just bringing those dark bits of sea. So even where there's 
the sea is really bright. You're getting little bits of shadow from the slight waves in the sea. We can just bring those all the way forward. We can add some blue touches in as well. And then in the foreground, we can make these waves bigger because we're, we're looking down on them now. And I think we're pretty much done, you know. I think there's a risk here of overdoing something which is quite fun. And so let's just do one last bit. That's going to be a dark line here. Bit of shadow under there. And there we go. So that is my um, Draw Matt and Doug's boat, number 11, Instagram challenge. So I'll pop that in the bottom. And I think it went pretty well and well under the 10 minute sketching challenge time. I'd love to hear from you guys um, what I could have done extra, what you like, what you don't like. Do you think these people are enough? For example, I, I've got to say, I really like how they come out, these sort of loose, wibbly wobbly people, but perhaps you don't. Let me know what do you think is good um, and what would you have done different? And thank you, of course, for watching. Um, do go and check out the challenge on Instagram. Um, these guys are both fantastic urban sketches worth checking out, not just for their challenges, but also for their art, of course.